name of your company is uh, Kazoku Martial Arts Center, right? Correct? Yes, you actually got it. <laughs> okay, perfect. So tell me a little bit about that. First of all, what's, what's the significance of the name? Um, so Kazoku actually means family or community. Um, I've been doing karate now for 20 years and to me it's always been an extension of you know my family and everything like that too so the one thing I didn't want to do is I didn't want to really name it um, anything else like why it's martial arts or anything because I felt like then it's about me and sure. what, what it really truly comes down to is it comes down to my students um, because without them we wouldn't have the dojo that we have now. I see. Okay, perfect. So your your dojo is over on Beverly Street, correct? It is now. We've um, we've officially moved in there, despite the situation. Um, so we're okay. dealing with renovations, but uh, it's our first official month there. So we're pretty excited. Okay, very good. And where were you before? We were over on Water Street next to EVO Kitchen. Um, oh right yes, in the Tiger, yeah. Tiger Building. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we were there for yeah. three years. So. We've outgrown the space. It's exciting. Yeah, very good. So what uh, what inspired you to get into martial arts? 20 years is a long time. That's a huge commitment. Yeah, I mean, despite my looks, I'm older than I look sometimes. Uh, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so I, I ended up getting in trouble at school. Typical okay. story. Um, I'm the youngest of four. And I wasn't the most popular kid, so I kept, I kept getting picked on a lot. Um, so mm -hmm. one day... I got in trouble with school and my parents were trying to find like an outlet for me. And I'd always said that I wanted to do karate. And I don't, I don't recall the full reason. I, I thought martial arts was cool. Um, wanted to be a Power Ranger like everybody else. Um, sure. Okay. But, uh, but it was just a way for my parents to direct that frustration and energy I had and to do the, you know, he needs discipline sort of thing. Um, and I just, I stuck to it. Like everywhere I go, uh, no matter where I am and whatever point of life I'm in, it always comes back to karate. Um, so, yeah. Very good. Excellent. And um, so uh, tell me, you're, uh, I went on your website there, and one of the first things I noticed is you're doing, especially in today's day and age, uh, virtual uh, instructions and lessons, correct? Yes. Yeah. Us and uh, a number of other dojos I know um have all taken to it we've I've, I've i'm well we're using it now we're using zoom um it's it's different it's changed um but i think what's kind of cool is the fact that we've made years and years and years of using social media um like facebook came out what 2007 whatever and uh yeah. i think building that platform you know provided us an opportunity so i i seized it i didn't want to close um, and then when I heard of Zoom, I'm like, all right, let's, let's do it. Let's just get on it. And um, most of my students have hopped on. Uh, it's the four to six year olds. They can't, they can't last very long sometimes on screens. And the parents told me that they're like, their attention span won't be there. Um, so I said, that's okay. And they're the ones who are, you know, waiting until it's over. Uh, but most of our students, yeah, they're training online. Wow. That's great. Okay. Yeah. So uh, until then you were obviously doing in class. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, is there a, uh, you, you're, you're practicing in the art of karate, correct? Yes. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that. What are the sort of the differences and why, why karate? So karate or karate, it's, it basically just means open hand. Um, the best example I could give is it's an umbrella term. So where, for example, everyone thinks yoga is one thing. Well, yoga has Bikram, Ashtanga, Samasa, all those styles. Well, karate is the same thing. Karate falls underneath martial arts. So you'd have like Muay Thai, boxing, uh, kickboxing, all those things. Then there's karate. And then under karate, you have various styles. Um, the styles were developed due mostly to like geographical areas. So for example, okay. uh, you have another style called Shotokan. And Shotokan is very like big, very linear, but those individuals would have been practicing um, on open fields or flat land. Um, right. Our style in particular is called Goju Ryu. And it's, uh, it translates to hard and soft. And it's a little more in close and tighter. And okay. the reason for that is from what I understand is they were fishermen. So a lot of the times like practicing on boats, the, the cliche karate kid sort of scene sort of thing. Um, yeah. But then there's also influences from uh, China that had actually come over because Okinawa where karate came from um, had a lot of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
like cross information with the Chinese and the Japanese or the Okinawans at the time, um, exchanging information and they'd go and explore and learn. And that's how you ended up with what we have now. Um, but yeah, so karate is like the big thing. And then you've got all these different branches from it, which is pretty cool. Lots to learn. I see. I see. Okay, perfect. And what is, what is a typical uh, age group of your, uh, of your students? For me personally, um, the ages four to six year olds, they, they absolutely adore coming. Um, but my biggest groups are definitely four to six and then seven to nine. Um, not because like I can't teach older. I do have older students, but my major population is the younger guys. So I think okay. it, it depends on the teacher. Um, yep. But a lot of my students who are seven to nine have aged in to my intermediate class or my um, teenage class now. So um, the ones that I don't tend to have a lot of are adults. Um, okay. But I think it's because people, uh, your community tends to think of karate as like discipline for kids. Um, so sure. the odd adult will come, but they don't necessarily feel it's for them or um, for, for whatever reason uh, that might be. But I'm open to okay. having adults come to class though. <laughs> okay. Good, good to yeah. know. Okay. And uh, how often do the kids, uh, are, how often are they expected to, to go and, and that sort of thing? The minimum, and this is minimum for me, um, twice a week just to at least keep up with the information. Um, okay. I have some students who come six days a week from Monday to Saturday. Uh, they'll also be my competitors, so they'll come out Sundays to tournaments, so that's seven days. Um, okay. And a couple of them have even taken to like my fitness classes and come out and coach. So there are the odd students that practically live at the dojo like I do, um, okay. but at least twice a week. And the odd occasion, I'll have a once a weeker, but that's because they're also doing hockey and soccer and all those other things. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. And uh, these, uh, the hours of the dojo, are they typically in the evening or is there lessons through the day? Yeah. Or? Yeah. So, sorry. Kids sorry, you cut out on school. Yeah. Yeah. So, majority of people I've played with the times a bit. Um, six o'clock is that magic number uh, because okay. my parents can be home. Some of my parents also work in Toronto, so it's getting back in time. Sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, because the other thing I also do, I, I personal train through the day. So I tend to give the mornings to my fitness clients who want to work out before work. I have my break in the middle to market and come up with stuff. And then I teach in the evenings. I see, I see. Okay, so there, there's a couple of different aspects here. So you do some personal training as well. Yeah, so I've, I've spent years, like karate is something that I know. That is, that is definitely the thing that I know the best. Um, I know fitness and I understand fitness it's having that identity. So I've now worked over the last um, year or so focusing on providing conditioning classes for um, my athletes and my adult students. So it's using fitness to increase their performance so they do well in tournaments and belt exams. I see, I see, okay. Okay, perfect. And uh, are, you a, are you a Cambridge native or? Yes, I am. I'm you born are. and raised okay, in Cambridge, good. yep. Yep, I lived okay. one year out of Cambridge, only one, and that was when I first moved okay. out. Um, but we came back because this is where the dojo is, and I'm pretty much stuck here. <laughs> I love okay, it. Though, so. And what, are, are you Galt, Preston, or Hesper? Or? Um, I that's for the longest time I didn't know. <laughs> in fairness, because I know this <laughs> might start something. Um, I would say I'm a Galt boy. Uh, the place okay. I used to train in. Um, was fixed in downtown Galt, hence why we started there ourselves. Um, I see, but I, I, lived up, I lived up near Shades Mill. So I, I see. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So Galt. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. No problem. Any, any, anything in particular that you love about Cambridge? Mm. Um, there, there's lots I love, and I will say it's um, like the downtown core area, the architecture, all that stuff. And I love the Grand River. I love the trails. The biggest thing for me, and it's always been a thing for me, is proximity. You know, we're not too far from Toronto. We're not too far from the border. We're kind of right in that good spot um, because my partner and I, we love to travel and make road trips and, and do things. So it's definitely where we're situated that I like the most. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Now, is there anything in particular that you want to mention about your dojo that you, you feel that our listeners should know? Um, yeah. So the biggest thing that I would say is... Our dojo, 
I don't know many dojos who might promote this or, or may not promote this. Um, but the one thing is that our space is, is considered, I would say, a safe space. Um, as a member of the LGBTQ plus community myself, um, I've always wanted the dojo to be a space where anyone can come and be themselves and not feel intimidated um, if they ever felt the, the want to come out. And because of that, because people, people have known me for a long time, they've, I've had so many individuals who've, who've expressed themselves, come out to me and have helped them transition from uh, being in the closet to coming out into society and just being that support and outlet for them. So that's, that's the biggest thing that I want to share. Um, to our okay, excellent. Very good. And how big is your, uh, is your dojo? How much space do you have there? Well, we went from 1555 square feet ish. Um, the dojo space in that space was much smaller. It was only a section of the room. Uh, yep. We've now doubled in size. So we're now in just shy of 3,000 square feet. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Good. The, the matted space is going to be 1,560 square feet, which I'm super excited for. Um, because if you knew our old dojo, it, it was small. So to have this big okay. room now for the kids to run, pretty exciting. Sam. Good. That's excellent. Very good. Well, you're in a good spot there. I mean, you're certainly in the middle of town, so it's easy to get to. Lots of parking. Oh, yeah. The, the parking. Yeah. <laughs> the parking is definitely helpful. Um, and I, I do want to share. So I know a lot of people have been asking, like, why that spot? Because there has been a stigma in that location for a long time. Um, but Long and McQuaid have moved in that particular yes. spot because they've done it before in places like Brampton and Toronto, where they situate themselves in a spot to elevate the area. So they want to bring it up um, and bring in a whole new demographic. And that's why they agreed to have us as tenants um, because they feel like we're definitely gonna compliment them and uh, help bring in a whole new vibe into that particular plaza, so. Yeah, no, I, th I think they've done a great job in there. I mean, uh, it's yeah. certainly given it a massive facelift. It looks, oh, yeah. it looks a whole lot better than what it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, they went into every unit as well. Like they made some bigger um, and they yeah. stripped them. They fixed the concrete, they fixed the walls. We were left to um, like add the bathrooms and things like that. Yeah. Um, but walking in there, seeing it from day one to where it is now, it's, you can't help but just smile and say like, wow. So it's very Excellent. exciting in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if somebody wants to get in contact with you or they want to get involved with your, um, with your organization, how do they go about finding you and reaching out to you? So the biggest thing to do, um, obviously, if you search up Karate Cambridge or Kazoku, um, we will pop up on Google. Um, okay. I, my email can be fairly long. I know that. So if you just okay. go through, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. If you try a complimentary session, it's just at the top of our website. Okay. Um, just fill that out. And I get emails right away. I take the personal effort to answer every email. I don't have any automated service. Um, and then if not that, like our Instagram page and our Facebook page, I'm constantly monitoring. So okay. if anyone sends me a message, I'm very quick to reply. Okay. And a phone number? Is there a phone number? Yep. Um, it's just 519-267-8882. Um, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Now, was there awesome. any question that I, um, that I didn't ask you that I should have? Uh, no, I think, I think we're pretty good. I think. Uh, okay. Good. Can't think of anything offhand. <laughs> okay, any comment, any, anything you want to say to the people from Cambridge at all? You know what, um, just in this particular moment in time, you know, we all know what's going on in the world. Sure. Um, the, the one thing I would want to share with everybody is we're here, we're here to help. Um, I try to be as, as helpful as I can for the community so that if they need a break in their day, if they need a way to just get any mental stress, physical stress, whatever, give their kids something fun to do, even just for an hour. I know a lot of yep. people want to be at the dojo, but this is a good alternative too. They want to reach out to me. Um, I'm here to help them. Awesome. That's great. Well, that's very good. I, I love the way you've embraced uh, technology and uh, it sounds like a great organization. I wish you all the best. Thank you. And uh, stay safe yourself and be healthy and, okay. you know, we'll, we'll make it through this.